pass our cares on you, because you always do above and beyond what we ask or think. We lift up our sick, our shut in, our bereaved. Father, you know, touch them in a mighty way. We got access to the throne room of heaven. Let us utilize that. We can come boldly to the throne room of grace. And while we're yet praying, the word, scriptures say you hear and you answer and I pray. Maybe not the way we want it, but he's blessing in a mighty way. Hear our prayer, oh God. Bless our efforts today. In the matchless name of Christ, our Savior. Hallelujah. wanna praise you forever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory, blessings and glory. remain standing for our invitation to celebration. You got to work all that food off, y'all. <laughs> it's a good thing. Lift your voices to praise the Lord God because all his ways are just. He called us from our Do you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Testament strictness comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, chapter 53, I'm sorry, 
verses 1 through 12. That's Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he was born, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears in silence. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who would declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put, he has put him to grief. And when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his judgment, my righteous servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and made transgression made intercession for the transgressors mm -hmm. hallelujah Shabbat Shalom family. The reading of the New Testament comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 17 through 26. Again, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 17 through 26. And it reads, Now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part, I believe it. For there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat Father Yah's supper, for in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of Eloha and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I received from Father Yah that which I also delivered to you that Father Yah Yahusha on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he gave and, we, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim Father Yah's death till he comes. 
Hallelujah. Shalom. The gospel reading this evening comes from Luke 22, verses 7 through 20. That's Luke 22, verses 7 through 20. Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lamb was sacrificed. Yeshua sent Peter and John ahead and said, go and prepare the Passover meal so we can eat together. When do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. He replied, as soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs in a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. They went off to the city and found everything just as Yahshua had said. And they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Yahshua and the apostles sat down together at the table. Yahshua said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of Eloha. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to Eloha for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of Eloha has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to Eloha for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup, is the new covenant between Eloha and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Hallelujah. children as it relates to what is the meaning of all of this why do you master on Passover we eat the master because there was a time to bake real bread and so this became the bread that they ate why do we eat of the bitter herbs as the Seder we eat the bitter herbs to remind us of the tears that were shed when we were slaves, it reminds us how bitter our lives can be when we are actually rebel against God. Why do we get food twice? We first dip the bitter herbs, the class, in salt water, representing the tears that the Israelites uh, shed as they walked away from Father Yah, and it brings tears to all of our lives. Why do we read on pillow for me? Um, okay, the, let me finish the, the Kaloshet. The Kaloshet, when we dip the second time, when we dip in the Kaloshet, this reminds us of the of the, uh, the clay and the Israelite slave that they used to build the bricks and mortars. The Kaloshet on the master, as we do here, uh, it represents what life can be when we truly uh, take the bread of life, the living word of the Most High, into our mouths with the sweetness of Yah's words when we follow him in obedience. We need 
important to us to remind us that we were slaves, but we are now free. Hallelujah. And the wine that you see on the Passover table, this is to remind us of the Seder that our Savior instituted before he went to Calvary. The cup, the wine symbolizes his blood shed for mission of our sin. And he said that all of you do this, eat shortly for his death and suffering when he comes again. Beyond Sabbath and Passover. In Leviticus 23, verses 3 through 8, this gives us a scriptural context for what we do when we gather. Listen now to the word of the Most High. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh is a Sabbath of solemn rest. A holy convocation. You should do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of Yahusha in our dwelling. These are the feasts of Yahusha, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed time. On the 14th day of the first month at twilight is Yahusha's Passover. On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yahusha. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. You shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahusha for seven days. The seventh day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. The scripture foundation for the celebration of the Passover. Now, the Haggadahs, the telling. The festival of Passover, known as Pesach, begins on sunset on the 14th of Abib, usually in March or April, and marks the beginning of a seven-day celebration that includes the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is sometimes used to refer to the single day and sometimes to the entire span of both festivals. The focal point of Passover is a communal meal called the cedar, which means order because of the fixed order of service. It is a time of rejoicing and celebration at the deliverance of the Hebrews from slavery in Egypt and Father Yah's creation of the Israelite people. Unlike the most holy days of, Christ of Christianity that are observed in the church, since the destruction of the Jerusalem temple in AD 70, Passover has been celebrated in the home with family and friends as they eat a meal together. The seder involves everyone being present since they all have an Haggadah, or Hebrew telling, the printed order of service, reading, and song, and are called to share in reading and singing of the story. They eat a meal together. Passover is really more than a festival. It is an elaborate teaching experience 
especially for the children, intended to call people to their identity as the people of Father Yah. By using all the senses, the Passover Cedar tells the story of Father Yah's grace in history and calls the participants to experience and share in the story as their own story. Passover becomes more than simply a service or time. It becomes a way to confess faith in the one who has acted in history. It is a time for Israel and believers in Yahusha to express the hope that he will continue to act and to bring deliverance to all people everywhere. The Exodus Passover. The Passover of the Exodus was a prophesied event in Abrahamic covenant. In, in Exodus 12, verses 1 through 28, the Most High institutes the Passover sacrifice. Instructions in Exodus, Exodus 12, 43 through 49, specify that the Passover could only be eaten in households where the males were circumcised. To be a participant of the Exodus or Egyptian Passover, a person had to be a participant of the Abrahamic covenant. The death angel passed over those who placed lamb's blood on their doorposts, and the Israelites left Egypt for the promised land as the Most High had promised. The Deuteronomy Passover. Months later, as Israel camped before Mount Sinai, Father Yah instituted a new covenant with them that was an extension and fulfillment of promises made under the Abrahamic covenant. The Sinai covenant eventually involved a formalized priesthood and tabernacle, which necessitated some changes in Passover administration as recorded in Deuteronomy 16, one through seven. of a Jewish Passover meal, which we've experienced, is the matzah, a bowl of salt water, wine, red grape juice, hard-boiled egg, which is optional, grated horseradish, parsley, and taro set. We've experienced that today, and I thank our illustrious pastor. Yahshua, Jesus, institutes a new Seder. The gospel contains very specific language signifying that the events of the Last Supper were in fact a new Seder added to the Passover meal. Luke 22, 7 through 23 wording is definite in declaring that Yahshua and his disciples are participating in a Passover service. The new Seder of the Passover, the Exodus Passover until a slaying of a lamb on the 14th of Abib so that the death angel would pass over the Israelites. The new Seder of the Passover, the Deuteronomy Passover, entailed sacrificing a lamb as a memorial of the Exodus Passover. In Israel's history, this was also seen as a means of sanctification. The new Seder of the Passover uh, entails the reality of Yahshua's sacrifice, the Christ as the Lamb of Yah, 1 Corinthians 5, 9 through 7. The Exodus and Deuteronomy Passovers entail eating a meal, including a lamb. The new Seder of the Passover entails eating bread and drinking wine as symbols of Yahshua, the Christ as the Lamb of Yah. With the reality of reality of Yahshua, the Christ fulfilling the Passover sacrifice, it was no longer essential to sacrifice a lamb as a type of future event. On that night before he died, Yahshua instituted bread and wine as symbols of his body and blood. Neither the Exodus nor the Deuteronomy Passovers contain any instructions about drinking wine. The present Jewish Seder consists contains wine, but the Seder is a Jewish tradition, not a scriptural injunction. The Exodus Passover involved the painting of the lamb's blood on the doorpost. 
the Deuteronomy Passover included the sacrificial blood of a lamb. The Passover for believers in Yahshua involved its participating participants being washed in his blood. Revelation 1, 4 through 6. The Exodus and Deuteronomy Passover contains no instructions for foot washing. John 13, 1 through 17. The Exodus and Deuteronomy Passover entailed sacrificing lambs to memorial, memorialize the Egyptian deliverance. The new Seder of the Passover memorializes Yah's deliverance of his believers from slavery to sin. That's Romans 6 chapter. Participation in the Exodus and Deuteronomy Passover was limited to families whose males were physically circumcised. The new celebration of the Passover is only for those who have been spiritually circumcised, symbolized by baptism. Romans 2, 29, Colossians 2, 11, and 12. The Exodus and Deuteronomy Passovers involved the quick killing of a lamb. The new celebration of the Passover includes the suffering of the Lamb of God. Isaiah 52, 13 through 53. Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. The new Seder of the Passover, Christ's sacrifice was more than the act of a Roman soldier stabbing him around 3 in the afternoon on the V-14. The sacrifice included all the events that began the night before. of the Passover. The Exodus or Deuteronomy slain of the lamb were types of Christ's sacrifice. Israel's leaving Egypt is a type of believers leaving spiritual Egypt. Believers should gather on the anniversary of the night before Christ's sacrifice. Not as a type of Israel's experience, but as a celebration of the profound reality of Christ's sacrifice and their deliverance from spiritual bondage. It is important for believers, the Messianic community, to not base their Passover observance on the Exodus or Deuteronomy administrations, but to follow Christ's instructions as the Passover lamb and high priest of a better covenant. Should believers in Yahusha celebrate Passover when we remain faithful to the Bible? The answer is clear and unequivocal. Because Christ is our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us observe the feast, Passover, and unleavened bread with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. telling me heart of us and I pray and hope that the meaning containing in the heart of us the telling why we do what we do become more explicit and hopefully uh, will saturate your heart and mind with till we are all are drawn to a life of obedience and instruction to father Yah's holy word Passover reflections as I've said on numerous occasions we have inherited our understanding of the Savior, Yahshua, Yahushua, the Christ, through the traditions of Eurocentric Christianity. That Christ of Eurocentric Christianity is not the Christ of Scripture. The Christ of Scripture obeyed the commandments of the Most High. They follow the law and keep, and he keeps it. 
He said, I've not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came to fulfill. Fulfillment does not mean that he came to end, but to help understand the moral context of what Father Yah gave. It is my desire and my prayer that when we come, that we don't come out of curiosity. We come to celebrate because we believe that this is the instructions of the Most High. Passover, like the Sabbath, like the feast day, is not a Jewish tradition. Let me repeat this. The Sabbath is not a Jewish Sabbath. Passover is not a Jewish Passover. The scripture says, on the sixth day shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. Listen to this last part. You shall do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of whom? Yahuwah, the Lord in all of your dwelling. This is the misinformation that we have been given, and as a result, we are clueless about what the scripture teaches us, more particularly about Father Yah's instruction for all humanity. In the end, Gentiles as well as Israelites will form one family. They will go up to Jerusalem together and they will embrace the traditions and the teachings of Father Yah's instruction. So why don't we now embrace divine truth? Why don't we now come out of Babylon, come out of the paganism of tradition, and embrace the truth of Scripture? What we're doing here is Scripture. It is not necessarily predicated to the Old Testament. That's part of the law. We are under grace. The law is grace. There is no contradiction between grace and law. Christ did not come to destroy the law. He did not come to destroy the commandment. He came to fulfill them, helping us to understand the moral basis by which Father Yah gave these instructions. So once we move our minds away from this as a Jewish tradition, it is Father Yah Sabbath, it is Father Yah Passover. Nowhere in Scripture does it say a Jewish tradition. This is man-made just like religion and all religions are based upon a human construct designed to shape our understanding and our view of who father Yah is and our requirements as followers of the redeemer so i pray today that our passover meal was delicious that you're full And that now you've heard the Haggadahs, now you have an understanding of the biblical context for what we do. Now, wearing white has no scriptural basis. You wear white as a symbolic gesture of purity. So it doesn't matter what you have on, but traditionally, you do not wear your finest of shoes and garments as a way of showing humility. It's much like me wearing a... Uh, uh, my head dress. The head dress symbolizes that Father Yah exists above you. It's worn in respect and acknowledgement of his authority above me. When I pray, I remove the hat. But ordinarily, it is to honor him who is the head, who is above all things. So I pray tonight that this celebration, as we continue the rest of the week, seven days of unleavened bread that we will continue to remember the awesome price of our salvation. Not only the deliverance of our ancestors from Egyptian slavery, but our deliverance from the bondage of sin that encapsulate us and keep us slave and bring us to uh, the point of divine judgment. And so, with that, we are bringing to conclusion our Passover celebration. And I hope that children, do you have questions, children? Do you have any other questions about what we do? Do you understand the symbolism? The 
the other herbs, why we eat them, why we dip it in the salt water to remind us of the bitterness of our ancestor servitude and their slavery, the tears that they shed, and the karoshet, the sweetness of the karoshet, is to remind us of the sweetness of Father Yah's blessings and benevolence. And so the wine was not part of the original Passover, but this is the Seder that Christ instituted, so therefore we do this in remembrance of him. Why? Because Christ is our Passover lamb. Christ is our Passover lamb. So we come today to acknowledge him in this Seder, but we also come in obedience to Father Yah instruction to all of his people. You are the chosen people of the Most High. Our history didn't begin in 1619. Our history began in Israel with our ancestors that we are all descendants of, but never been told who we are. Do your DNA study so you can find out where you came from. And when you discover that, you're going to realize you come from a long legacy of people that Father Yah embraced as his own. Scattered? Yes, we are scattered. Why? Because our people, by nature, are stiff-necked. And as a result of disobedience, he scattered us over the face of the earth. We are the only people that have been scattered through all the nations of the world. Israel has not gathered in 1948. Israel is still scattered. And when Yahushua come, he will now gather true Israel in their land where there will be peace, no bombs, but he's going to do what? Devour the enemy and restore his kingdom on this earth. And so let us be obedient. So when he comes, we will find ourselves ready to meet our king, to meet our savior, to meet him where we can go together and celebrate the victory of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father Yah, for the Passover. Thank you, Father Yah, for reminding us who we are. We are your chosen people. We are the one that you have called. And I pray, Father Yah, that we will live the part that we are and become obedient to your word, repent, and come out of Babylon and come to divine truth and begin to be who you are and embrace that. And so when he comes, he will find us ready to meet him. But we can go now and celebrate to eternity. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.